know why we want to make sure that they're always intact because if they started to chip or get damaged and we put them in the container after they go through the sterilization process and disintegrate they might start to look like bio burden or some foreign debris and anything that shouldn't be in there when they open it up in the or they have a right to disqualify the trade because as far as they're concerned it's contaminated okay so what goes in next what kind of indicators? Um, class, class five. five. Where did I put them? In the middle? Put them in the corners. Why in the corner? Say it. That's a good answer. That's not the one I want, but you gave me half of it. You said put it in the corner. That's good. Give me something else. What is it about the corners? Come on, Shanique. It's the hardest place for the steam to get to. So if it gets to the corners and it's good, then we're good, okay? So I put the basket in. How do I know what instruments should go in first? The count sheet? Oh, good. I need a count sheet, right? Does everything have a count sheet? I got you. So we got our count sheet. Good. Got my count sheet. What are some of the instruments that are on the count sheet by categories? Retractors. retractors. Give me a diva retractor off the table. Give me an Army and Navy retractor off the table. Give me the Adson Beckman off the table. Give me a Wheatlander off the table. Diva retractor. What is it about the Diva retractor? It's on a different size. Different sizes. It's a handheld retractor. Are there any other types outside of handheld? Self-retaining. Self Thank you. What's this again? Handheld or self-retaining? Handheld. Excellent. Jermaine, what you got there? What's this one? These two look alike. How do I know which one is which? <laughs> it won't break. Oh, this one bends. Yeah. And his doesn't. No. What's yours called? Beckman. Mm -hmm, Beckman. And yours is called what? What? Uh, what should we? What else besides bending? What should we watch out when we do these type of retractors? The prongs. What about the prongs? Blunt or sharp. Excellent. Um, are these all the same size or they can be different sizes? Cool. Are they handheld or self-retaining? Awesome. Is there one type that's missing? Which one? Table mount. Good. Do you know the name of one? Book Walter. You're on point. Good. Okay. Um, Shanique, I won't let you be left out. Give me the Army Navy side. Huh? All right. I'm gonna see what y'all know. Abby, you ready? Yes. Go get them. I'll tell you what I need. Abby, I've got some suctions on the table. Would you bring me the suction devices? I've got several different ones. <laughs> That's one. What's this one called, class? What about the Yank Hour? What's up with the cat? Can I, should I keep track of it? Yeah. All right. What else you got? The pool? the pool? Which one is the pool? Is she correct? Yeah. Mm hmm good. With the ones that are detachable, we always wanna make sure at each phase of processing that we detach it and flush it, okay? They will let us know, like with the suction, when I say they, the OR, is whether or not to package them with the top on or off, because sometimes they want it off just to prove that we've taken it apart. And which one you got now? Excellent. How do you know the difference between which Frazier is which? The numbers on it. Excellent. Abby, you are a superstar.
So it's okay that Abby turned her summary in late. We're going to give her a pass. Hold it. You forgot one. You forgot one. Ah, do you remember which one that is? Yes. What is it? If you don't know, Nazaya does. Because it's the number five. Which one is that? The Baron. Great. Thank you. So we got four different types of suctions, and they're all on our count sheet, right? We got tissues. I'm sorry. Huh? The ribbon retractor, you want to get it? I really, I really appreciate it. What are these? Knife handles. What goes in these? Blades, suture. Okay. Do we put them in? Do we take them out? All right. What happens if we get a tray and it has the blade in it? What are we obligated to do? Report it. Good. And which types of knife handles do we usually have? Three, seven, and come on, Sasha. Number four, whoever said that. Good. I don't know. All right. So just a few more things so we can get out the way and keep moving. Uh, CC, give me the sin retractor. And I don't mean sin like what you do when you think God ain't watching. I mean the other one. Shalaya, give me the bipolar four set. That is the sin retractor. What is so unique about this tractor? It has the hoof and the prong. So because it has a prong, I have a question for you. You ready? Can these prongs be sharp or blunt too? That is correct. Thank you. And this is the bipolar four set. Thank you, Shalaya. The difference between your bipolar forceps and the other ones that we've seen so far, when we think of bi, it can go two ways. So the bipolar forceps looks like a bayonet, which will be introduced later, but it has these prongs on it, which connects it to currency in the room. All right, great. So these instruments and more. Okay, Shalaya, I got skin hooks over here. Huh? Shanique, oh. I said Shalaya, but I've been, it was a trick. You did. Skin hooks. They are by themselves. Uh-huh. Now, why should we be careful with them? Show them to the class, and you are correct. Those are skin hooks. What's up with the skin hooks, y'all? They sharp. They sharp, what else? Tip protectors, excellent. The tip protectors will protect the integrity of the instrument and also prevent you from getting stuck. Uh, what's a tip protector? Once again, grab one. Do we have one that size? Uh, okay, good. So that's just some, it might be some smaller ones. Actually, you're right, this one. Good. Another thing about the skin hooks could be single or double. That, those are double. Sometimes we have the single skin hooks and skin hooks are the exception when we are single. Thank you, Shanique. You do a great job, always. Um, you can. Yeah, thanks. Remember, most of the instruments get packaged individually. Now, these peel pack instruments, Renesha, are in pre-sealed envelopes. What happens if I've got an instrument that I need to package and sterilize and it's too big to go in here. What do I do? I could wrap it or heat sealer. So where's the heat sealer at? <laughs> so, so we know that somewhere in the department is a heat sealer. Good. And that's what it's used for. So we have these rigid containers that we've been assembling our trays in. Let's start to look a little more at 
how they work for us and why we like them. One of the things that we love about them is they provide an excellent barrier against contaminants, okay? Another thing about them, they protect the instruments from damage. I have a question. So a tray comes in and it weighs 35 pounds. Can I process it? No. It can't be over 25 pounds, good. Suppose it is, because remember we do these things called loaner instruments, sound familiar? What is, what's up with the loaner instruments? They don't belong to us, who wants the whole thing? Explain the whole thing, loaner instruments. Go Terrell. Mm -hmm. Good, how long do we keep them? Mm, that's, that's all right, until they're done. How long do they stay with us in the hospital? How many times do we process them? Twice, why twice? All right, you're halfway right. When they come, we know that we clean them, true? And we, how do we wrap them? With wrap. <laughs> but they only remember come just for that one case. And after that case is over, they go back. And this is to what, um, Shalea said, we send them back clean. They come in, we clean them, and after the OR uses them, we clean them, we just don't rewrap them. And for those that they don't use, because remember, loaners could be two to 20, right? So whichever ones they don't use, we can just unwrap and send them back. They won't have to be cleaned again because they were never used, just FYI. Okay, one of the other things some concerns, because it's a good and bad to everything. The disadvantages to using rigid containers are the weight, because you may be a shorter person, right? And you have to lift them and carry them versus a taller person or weight appropriate. So the concern over injury, balance and weight is something. Where it says additional time may be needed for drying how would we know how long to dry something? IFU, what does IFU stand for? Where do we get them? Yeah, on the what? Mm, we got two ways that we, online or in the book, excellent. And that means it's either manual or automated. You guys are great. Now. Storage space is an issue everywhere in healthcare. We fight over the first closet that become empty. The other thing, additional labor may be required to clean containers between use. This is where you guys really show off because you're able to push containers, instruments, and case carts through. Filter retention plates could become dislodged. We talked about that a little bit, true? Our filter retention tapes keep the filter locked in. Now, what about the filter? Should we, can we use them over and over again? No. We change them. Do we inspect them? For what? Excellent. Holes. And just like when we put the filter retention plate in the tray, whether it's on the top or bottom, we want to make sure it's secure because if it becomes dislodged and the filter is no longer in place, then what happens to the tray? Contaminated. Great. So now we look a little more at the different parts of it's important for us to be able to identify the different components is because we want to get the most out of it. All right. So it's a couple of ways that we put it together and how we carry it. Never, never do this. We don't carry them like this, never. All the instruments that you assembled so nicely in the tray have now fallen apart and they're everywhere. And we're putting an extra burden on the handle. So we always carry them appropriately, okay? Now let's look at our rigid containers versus our wrap instruments, and I have a question.
Ronesh, are you ready? All right, this is the this is the side of the room. Oh, yeah, I can break y'all into three teams for that. All right. You have your wrap container. Okay. And I have my rigid container. It's got a lid on it. And I'm ready to load them up into the sterilizer. You guys are on steam today. Okay. You guys are prep and pack and you are decontaminated. One, two, three. It's time for you to load the instruments into the sterilizer, okay? Can I put, and these are on shelves. Hear the question all the way through. Does it go like this where the rigid containers are sitting above the wrapped instruments or the wrapped instruments you got three different tiers, right? And I'm loading them up. Am I loading them with the wrapped on top or the rigid on top? Think about it. Because your answer, think about why I'm asking. And yes, there is a specific way. Who says that the rigid goes on top? Who says that the rap goes on top? This is yours. You all are unanimous and you all are right. Now, why is it like that? The heavier stuff goes on the bottom. That's a good answer. Give me another one. Get damaged how? Moisture, y'all on point. Y'all are so on point. That's it, that's the reason why. Condensation will come from the rigid container because it's metal. And therefore, if it drips onto the wrap, it could contaminate, it could cause a pillow. There is going to be no condensation dripping from the wrap, and excellent. We always put the heavier on the bottom. Remember when we started assembling the trays, heavier instruments on the bottom, true? Same thing when you're loading your sterilizer, Shanique. Heavy trays always on the bottom. What we are charged to do as technicians is the balancing act, okay? Because we've got these rigid containers. This is you three. You're in prep and pack, right? You've got trays that have to be packed and I've got 20 loaners that need to be wrapped, right? And your shift also has to do my 25 basins. Okay, so you've got wraps and you've got basins. I have a wrap, I have a basin. Why don't you sh demonstrate how they should look when I get them, when you pass them on to sterilization? So here's the tape. One of you is doing the wrap and one of you is doing the basin <laughs> and the other one gets to answer the questions. Team work. One of you is doing the basin, and one of you is doing the wrap. Oh, Decon, don't worry, I got y'all. <laughs> now, look what she's doing. Remember we said everything has a count sheet, right? If you're watching, Jessica is wrapping, and Jessica, you've got that tray liner in there. Why is that there? Because metal won't touch metal. And why is that important? Condensation, good. So she is strategically wrapping this basin set so that it's kind of a um, barrier. Again, excellent. Show off your technique, ladies. <laughs> you will all wrap basins <laughs> and you're going to be good at it. I tell you this, because it starts here with your training. Good, take your time. Don't act like we're watching. So, since they're working, Jermaine is still here. What is Jermaine doing? If, if we're in prep and pack, right? They're wrapping. What's Jermaine doing to keep the flow going? She's inspecting? Nope, she's doing something. She, she could, do, no, she's doing trays. She's doing single instruments. She already did one. But what is she doing to keep things flowing? 
Good, you got your priority trays. How do you know what's a priority? No, because because by the way, there was supposed to be six of y'all, but two called out and one showed off and I sent them home. So how about this? Decon is constantly pushing stuff through to prep and pack. So while they're doing that, what's Jermaine doing? Unloading the mechanical washers? Yes, Jermaine is unloading the washers and putting the priority trays and loaners in order. Jermaine is also unloading what? The cart washer, because <laughs> yes, we all are. Okay, so Jermaine, these rigid containers, when they come back to you, they should come back separate. If you're in decontam, this is you guys, you have to set her up real nice. So you have to make sure, go ahead, Jermaine. No. Back together? Good question. How about as you go? What you want to do, that's good. Jessica, that's good. Now, is there, keep going. You got 30 more to do. You'll be fine. This is good. Now, what's the key to how we open it? Everything that we wrap is open for the field. Remember that. They have to be able to open it aesthetically in the field. They don't want to fight with it. You want to wrap, Jermaine? Teamwork. And this is important, right? I told y'all three are here, three sh didn't show up. So you three, Jermaine, Jessica, and Naziah, have to decide who's the strongest at this, that, and the other, and make it work. There's no ego in central processing. Everything that you do is important. Whether you're in decontam, assembly, or everybody makes a contribution to taking care of the patient. All right? So, this is what they want to do when it comes in the OR. They want to open it right up. They don't want to fight with it. And what is the first thing they're looking for? The indicator, which I don't see. <laughs> it's in there, like Prego. <laughs> We can use more, oh God, we could have used a couple. <laughs> it's all in the bottle. <laughs> but it was in there and it's okay to put two. One of the tricks that you're gonna learn and I'll teach you here. Here we go, this technician did it. They put one of the indicators on the liner so that they could see it when they first opened it up. And then you always wanna put one on the bottom because you don't know how much time they have. If it's an emergency case, they gotta open up and set up. It's not like it's the first case where they have time to set up. What are these called? Who remembers? Pitchers, good. They could be called pitchers or galley pots. How about this one? Knife basin, you're correct, Terrell. The knife basin, or they might call it an emerus basin. The emerus is kind of the curved one. And then you have your bowl. Okay, sometimes you will wrap just the plain basin. And then sometimes it may, depending on the hospital and what they're using, okay? Good job. So we got loaners. We're working on our single instruments. We're back to the rigid containers. Don't worry. Okay, look, decontam, here you go. Where are you putting this? What is that machine called? Where's my decon people? Y'all in decon? Okay, so you're setting them up like this to come through, right? What else are you sending through besides the rigid containers? Basins, good. Now, what else are y'all doing in decontam? Manual cleaning instruments, excellent, Terrell. 
Is there another method that you're using to clean my instruments? Mechanical? Great. How, what are you using to do it mechanically? Ultrasonic cleaner, good. What else? You, cart washer, two down, one to go. The washer disinfector, good. All right. So you're pushing three things through. You're manually cleaning instruments. Do you manually clean everything? <laughs> Do you manually clean everything? All right. Do you push everything through the mechanical washer? Why? How do I know if it's manually or mechanically? IFUs, good. Now, gaskets, you're going to become familiar with this term because gaskets are kind of like insulators, okay? You're going to see them here. on your lids and you want to make sure that they're intact and then you guys over in sterilization you've got gaskets going around your sterilizers you want to make sure that they don't have holes that they're intact because Shalea, you keep constantly pushing the door to close you're pressing the button and it's rejecting it so one of the first things you would look at is let me make sure the gaskets are good okay inspection of all of our equipment is kind of mandatory because that's how we can detect defects. If we know what we're looking for and where to look for it at, okay? Now, we inspect all the components, yes. And here are our three methods. Um, we're looking at materials, okay? That rack that you see, remember I was telling you guys have the different size rack. The top shelf will probably be 54, we rarely wrap things that big, but we have it just in case, all right? 45 is the most frequent use. Then you have your 36, your 24, and I think the smallest might be 18. It's probably not on the rack. What the technician in the left top is doing, pill packing the instruments, okay? So that she's practicing the aseptic technique. We have two two aseptic techniques, if I'm correct. Am I correct? Yes. What's one? Medical. medical. What's up with medical? And surgical is the other one. What's the medical? <laughs> medical. Sterile technique, right. Sterile techniques is after the instrument has been sterile, we make sure that it doesn't get contaminated and medical is cleaning it. Clean technique. Principles of acceptance, who wants them? CC? <laughs> we got five principles of acceptance. Hit it. Know what is dirty, know what is clean, know what is sterile, keep all three separate, and remedy. <laughs> and that's everybody's responsibility. Great stuff. That pouch that you see on the bottom. Huh? The knife holder. The knife holder. You, yeah, I'm getting ready to get to that. Can, can, <laughs> can, can I have a minute, please? All right. <laughs> well, what we notice right away, um, I got a question, so y'all better be on point. I'm assembling this tray, yes? I've got extra instruments. You mentioned the knife holders. How about the knife holders and some forceps? What type of forceps do we have? Tissue and dressing. What's the difference? Abby, you said what? The serrations. Go ahead. I can't play with y'all today. All right, so look, I'm assembling this tray. Right? Sasha, I haven't picked on you yet, so get ready. <laughs> Especially since you got on your scrubs and you all fly today. I got to get you. All right. Actually, this tray is for the prep and pack area. 
so you get a pass. I'm assembling this tray. Which one can I use? The bag. Why not this? Pull holes. I can put an indicator in here. I can put an indicator in here. Why can't I use this? Hello, moisture. That is the reason why. Other than that, that's the only reason. So if you're assembling a tray, never put these in your tray sealed or open because it will maintain moisture. These pouches are craft paper, which we're going to see, and they are validated to go inside the tray. They won't hold the moisture. They do. It'll change color. But And the other thing also, when you're doing your trays and you use these, put an indicator in here as well. That's the other thing. Some of the trays, Shanique, that you're going to do have other trays within the tray that are allowed to go in here. Not plastic, not plastic, but there are trays, small trays, that are designed to go in. They don't have any, okay. They could be this small, they, they, it depends on what they are. Stay with me. The reason why they have them because you're going to come across some clamps like bulldog clamps and your air instruments where they're so small, we could lose them in the tray. So we have containers that they're validated to go in. Your count sheet will usually let you know, okay? Then the other thing, when you do assemble those trays, make sure you put an indicator inside of them as well, all right? So there are materials that are allowed to go in your trays and not contaminate them. These are all considered disposables, by the way. We're going to use them one time. We're always inspecting for tears, holes, and damage. And one more thing, the expiration date. Okay. Now that filter that you see is a round filter because remember, our some of our systems are universal, meaning it could be round, it could be square, just like these, right? And I know somebody's going to tell me what they are. The orange ones that we've been using that I don't see now that I want one. The locks, that's one word for them. What else can we call them? Tamper evidence seals. Good one, Terrell. And you, tamper evidence seals. They could be arrows like we've seen. They could be locks. They could be orange. They could be blue. But we, they have to serve the same purpose, meaning they will let us know if the tray has been tampered with, therefore, it's disqualified. The filters will be round or square depending on the container. And some hospitals have filters for different methods of sterilization. Some are universal and some they only use on the low temperature, okay? This is the paper that we just saw. It's medical grade, it's approved. And what it does, you want your trays to be neat and orderly. So certain things, if you have a tray that has a lot of forceps in them, your needles, you can put them all in there. They'll, you know, and as long as you're accurate, when they get it to the field, they'll put them in there and they'll be thankful that you guys made the trays look nice and neat. Your work speaks for you. Every tray that they open that says Jessica Douglas, they say, Jessica, did you do this tray? You should be like, I did, what's up, right? <laughs> because I know it's accurate. I know I inspected my instruments, right? Speaking of inspecting instruments, if you had a set that has scissors on it and the scissors were six inches long, what type of testing material would you use? That would be the red one. Good, Ronation. So suppose the scissors were three inches and I wanted to test them. Yellow, okay, good. Now, when we're looking at paper to plastic, 
This is for you people over in sterilization. We're my steam team. There you go. Don't forget, you guys are putting in wrap trays. You're putting in rigid containers. You also are doing single instruments, OK? So you have to make sure that you're loading them properly. And the correct method is paper to plastic. What do you mean, Mr. Ford? OK, I'm glad you asked. There are setups. They look like, uh, well, I could be doing it in one of these. Uh, look at this, y'all. I forgot. Here are our tamper evidence seals that I was looking for. <laughs> OK, so that, that makes that more for us. Here is a review of the different testing materials that we use. These are all job aids. They should have them at your place of employment. But if they don't, I know continue to take advantage of them while they're here. All right, while we're in class, continue to review until you're comfortable 100%. All right, so is that leading me to a question? Scissors, I like to play with the scissors because they're sharp. How can I tell my scissors that are really sharp? The rings, what about the rings? Supercut scissors and they are black, good. So what I was gonna show you about the wrap instruments, okay? These right here. When you do your pill packs, my steam people, you probably maybe have 50 of them. You're gonna have a lot of single instruments. You wanna position them. I'll get it, CC, thank you. <laughs> You said I'm taking too long. Thank you. I said youth. After they are sealed and packed, they will go like this. That's what we mean when we say paper to plastic. And you will put them in. Everything still gets stamped with a lot sticker. Right, Ronation? We put them in paper to plastic. By putting them in these perforated baskets, the steam will go through them. And I can do a whole, I can stack a whole lot more like this than if I lay them down. True. Hospitals should have something, Shanique, that look like uh, cradles where you just line them up and put them in. Because you've got to move everything. Steam. You got three sterilizers. You got to get those wrap trays through. You got to get the containers through. You have to get my single instruments. And you have to get my floor trays through. So that's why you've got a two-part job. You have to ask them, what are the priorities? What's this, right? So you know you keep everything together because if you got 20 loaners, you don't want four over here and six over here. You want to process them and get them all together. True, Sasha? So the other thing, when one comes out after it's cool enough, somebody's got to put them away so that when the case cart team starts getting ready for the cases the next day, they're on the shelf, okay? Plus you guys, have the responsibility of documentation. What's my rule with documentation? If it's not documented, it didn't happen. Okay? And your documentation always needs to be clear and concise. Remember that. The paper is where the sterling comes through. Now, even though that one on the top is double peel packed, we really in the business have gotten away from that because of the waste. And that's one of those exceptions also where there are two instruments versus one. It depends on what they ask you to do, but primarily it's single. Skin hooks might be a double, okay? Questions for me so far? Go. Side by side, paper. Show me. Come show me what you want to know, and I'll let you know if it's correct. Our thoughts were um, we're not supposed to stack these components in general, not this. 
They're not supposed to be on top of each other. No, it wouldn't be. Right. That's Good right. question. So this is the shelf. Because right. remember, your carriage has three shelves. Mm -hmm. This would be on the top shelf, along with your wrapped items and anything. It, you follow me? Yes. OK. Did I answer your question? No. <laughs> Go ahead. So you can have so she can have clarity. So because they'll do the same stuff as the rat Right. I'm saying if there's more than one of these, right? Side they go side, side by side. side. That is okay, correct. Thank you. That's what I was like, wait. That is correct. Okay, good. And you got clarity. Did you understand what she was asking, Abby? No. Me neither. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Me neither. That's why I told her to come up here. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, but everybody understood. This is what a lot of times you'll hear it. And you have to actually see it to get it. So now you know what it means when it says paper to plastic and place it on the ledge and so on and so forth. The balancing act with you guys in sterilization is to make sure your goal right now at four o'clock is first deferred. You're always pushing for your first two cases the next day when we wonder what drives our priority, right? Those priority trays are your one of a kind trays and your heart trays, your transplant, your brain trays, trauma. There are certain trays that we always, if you, let's go to Presbyterian, all right? We're at Presbyterian, we're at Einstein. Any of your trauma hospitals, they have to have those trays ready, okay? Shanique's coming, Shanique is coming in for a transplant. Those transplant trays have to be ready because she's already got her bag packed. This is the patient that we don't see coming yet, Ronatia that's waiting for the transplant. Once they get the call, we've got a match. She's got her bags packed and she's ready. She's got a certain amount of time to get to the hospital. The first thing we know she's coming, the OR starts setting up the room. They gotta have the trays ready to set up because that's a long involved case. A transplant case can run 12, at least 12 hours. So we wanna have those instruments ready. Patient was in a car accident or a trauma, those trauma trays have to be ready. So those are your priorities. And at the same time, you got to get ready for my first two cases tomorrow. Yeah. Why the first two? Schedule, we saw it usually starts like seven o'clock in the morning in most ORs. You're my seven o'clock patient, Nazaya, and you ate something and you wasn't supposed to. Or you're late or your pressure is up. We can't stop because of you. Move the second patient into the room. That's why the hospitals always have the first two ready. So if something goes wrong with the first one, push the second one in and keep it moving. We are constantly moving. And there are some things that we always want to have in place. You will never be penalized if you're doing priority trades. I like you. That you can look and see these are the priority rack. Do we really need basins right now? No. Let me do this. So this is where you start to open up with your eyes and see and you ask, what can I do right now to keep this thing moving? And basins we always need. So coming in, you're going to be an asset with whatever you do. Notice the technician in the top left is putting in a tamper evidence seal and it looks different than the one that I gave you, right? Those are the arrows. It's still the same thing. It has to be locked. There's the heat sealer we were talking about at five o'clock where the technician is sealing an envelope, just an instrument, just like the one with the two fingers on the end, except using a heat sealer. Chamfer evident, make sure that it wasn't damaged two different variations of what your tamper evidence seal looks like. Blue, orange, it serves the same function, whether it's the arrow, which is on the right, depends on what type of system your hospital has invested in. And you might have both because maybe at one point they used Asculap, vendor gave them a better ideal, a better price, and they switched over. As long as it's a validated package, We'll use it. Heat sealer, hot. Be careful before you start sealing things that you got it on the right temperature, true, and that you have it in an area that you won't get hurt. 
you are important. We don't want to hurt you. We don't want you to get hurt and we don't want you to hurt our patients. What's the number one way we help our patients? What is that thing that we're responsible for? What do I want to prevent the patient from getting? An infection. So infection prevention is what we do. How do we do it? Excellent. One of the ways we do it, we make sure that our instruments are clean and functioning. If they're functioning properly, then it won't cut incorrectly, right? If it's functioning properly, then it will do what it's supposed to do. And barring human error, the patient will have a good outcome. That's our thing. We kill microorganisms, right? What are microorganisms, somebody? We can't see them, but they're there, right? And what we have found out, and COVID is a prime example, is what you don't see that can be more deadly or harmful than what it is you see, correct? So our job is to make sure that those unseen microorganisms don't make it to come into contact with our patients. Good. This is an example of something that wasn't done so good. It's not seamless. And because it's not, Bacteria, those unseen things that we were talking about, unseen microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, okay? None of them any good. They are looking for a way to get in. And as we found out, right, in microbiology, some of them are very, very hard to kill, true? Because everything wants to live. And if we provide the proper atmosphere, moisture, primarily, they will have a chance to grow. So that's why it's so important that we go extra and beyond to make sure that our product is safe for patient use. Now, let's look at these two. What do we notice first off? One is sterilized and one wasn't. How do we know the difference? So this one is sterile? This one is sterile? 100% or possibly? Why 100%? That doesn't mean it's sterile, right, Shanika? Shanika, stay with teacher, stay on my side. <laughs> Steam team, this is for you, all right? It's wrapped, the paper has turned color. Is, does that mean it's sterile? No, thank you. Why not? She's going places. And so are you and you and you and you. Outside, it looks like it, right? But we're humans. So here's what happened. Shalia pushed it in, right? But she never started it. She pushed it in and then she started doing something else and that she never hit the start button. And she done went on break. Cece comes up, opens it, pulls it out, say, oh. They changed colors because they were in the sterilizer. They were exposed to the heat, right? But until you open it up and see that chemical indicator, that's one way. What's the other way, Terrell? Go, no, go back to what we said. If it's not documented, it didn't happen. So if I don't have any proof, any paperwork that tells me I ran that load, the lot stickers, exactly. Every load that comes out has paperwork attached to it. If I don't have the paperwork to match that load, it never happened. Good, you guys are sharp. Y'all must got a good instructor. <laughs> yeah, you going places. <laughs> this is an example some hospitals use to butterfly the instruments. I showed you a better way. <laughs> okay, lubricant. What's another word for it? Where do we use it? Over here, over here, or over here? Over here. You're not decon. Where do we use it, guys? Lubricant. Assembly. You guys are testing the functionality. All they got to do is clean them and push them through. 
You guys are the ones that use it. Mm, is, it is it break time? We must be getting closer. <laughs> okay, good stuff. So we apply the lubricant as necessary. Good. We protect our instruments from damage. If it's damaged, what do we do with it, Jessica? You're putting this tray together. Jessica, go get the sponge sticks off the table. Better yet, better yet, give me a rider needle holder. A rider needle holder. One. And it is correct. Now, if Jessica, she's assembling this set and she does this with all her instruments, just like all of you, she's checking for debris. At your workstation, you've got a light and you've got it on. At your workstation, you have some type of magnifying device, whether it's a, you're looking, you're using, you're making sure, and then you're noticing like, this sure is stiff. That's when she would apply it. Yeah, the milk, <laughs> the milk, and then just keep it moving. With every instrument that you handle, you're going to be the last one to sign off on this tray before it gets to the OR. So you are making sure that it's correct, it's the right one, and as your count sheet says, you have in the right amount. Good stuff. Questions for me so far? We moving pretty good? What does it say on the bottom line, Terrell? Excellent. What does it say before that? And we do that with tip protectors. Now remember this too. These tip protectors that I'm showing you that we use are sleeves. Some hospitals may still actually have the plastic ones that go over. We use what they have. We don't go in there and say, <laughs> So get, yeah, don't go in there and get snooty, right? Because everybody doesn't have HUP money. Everybody doesn't have Jeff money. Those hospitals are well-funded. You may, when you start off, wind up at St. Mary's or Lord's, nothing wrong with them. No matter where you go, it's still a one-way flow. Am I right about it? No matter where you go, decon is decon, prep and pack and assembly. That does not change. Some of the materials that they use might be different, Shalaya, but they still perform the same function. Tip protectors protect the instruments from damage. Okay? Goody, here are some other tip protectors that you get to see. The ones on. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Those are the ones I was just talking about, and I don't like them. <laughs> I never, when I, I never ordered them, I don't like them because they come off and sometimes they, they don't melt on the instruments, but you know what I'm talking about, right? They can become resistant, yeah. But the cheap hospitals, they still, <laughs> I know. These scissors look real good, but you can do better, Jermaine. You've done, yours are better. Huh? I know, but yours look better than that, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. Yours are better because you know to put the flap down and keep the rings apart. And because those handles are black, those scissors are most likely sharp, super cut. Good. These are used sometimes. I've, I've used them. They're foam. And the reason why we try to stay away from foam so much is because they maintain moisture. Remember, I was telling you guys, especially, remember, Ronation, we were talking about the um, corner protectors? Some hospitals still use foam, but for the most part now, they use the plastic. And the reason we've got the corner protectors are there to make sure that we don't get holes in our wrapped instruments. Questions so far for me? You guys are doing great. These are just some of the different size stringers. Mm -hmm. Now, that floor tray that's in the back, that tracheotomy tray, I would have used this one because it's not that many instruments. Remember the one that we opened that, 
that raggedy technician did. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just teasing. I won't use the word raggedy, but not as competent, okay? Um, you want always to be proud of your work. Now this item here, is one of those that's used for positioning inside. Remember I was telling you, the tray in the tray, like we use the bags. That will go in there. I'm hoping that one shows up in the presentation so I can show you better than I'm telling you. Those are holders. Here we go. What's the device that we're packaging? Is it a shaver? Is it a whole tray? The steps for preparation, you guys walk me right through it, step by step, you're great. We made sure that we had, uh, whether we were going to pack it, wrap it, or box it, true? This is real important, and you guys tell me why. Excellent, excellent. And the reason why that is important, can anybody want to elaborate? we got two types of sterilization, yes? Steam and low temperature. If I was to take an indicator, right, that belongs in steam and put it in my low temperature tray and put it in the low temperature sterilizer, correct? And I pull it out and the OR opens it up and it changed color, can they use it? No because it's not validated for that sterilization. That's why it's so important when you're putting your trays together that if it's a wrap tray, we gotta make sure we're using the correct tape and we always wanna make sure we're putting the correct indicators in because it can only be validated for the method of sterilization that we're actually using, true? Okay. Those are rookie mistakes. If you get in the habit from the start, right Abby, put your, liner and your indicators in, if that's always your habit from go, you will never have your trays disqualified because they don't have indicators. As your manager, I find that hard to defend, okay? Just like remember with your scopes, guys, I was telling you, if it says zero degree, 10 millimeter, that's what you should put in. Your count sheet, whatever it's asking for, this is where some of, some of the mistakes that are human errors that can be avoided Make sure if your container says two 10 millimeter, five liter scopes, that that's what you are putting in. Because sometimes it can get mismatched. You always want to make sure that it adds up, Shani. What you're putting in is what it says, is what your count sheet says. Take a few minutes. Ascent also with your light cords. Your instruments that have to be tested, your batteries, your light cords, we were talking about PSIs, right? With your PSIs and your light cord, your um, lighted, there's a cord that's attached to it. Most departments have invested in a light cord tester. It's just like at home, how you would test your light, make sure that it works. But the other important thing is you wanna make sure that it's the correct one. Look at the number on the cord, look at the number on the count sheet. How can I defend you if it clearly says 007 and you put in 027? It, she have her glasses on. <laughs> then why didn't she use the magnified light? <laughs> See what I'm saying? So always go for accuracy. Speed is going to come. We want to make sure the type and size, you guys demonstrated this so well today with the peel packs and the wrap. We always want to be size appropriate with what we are trying to wrap and the method. The other thing that we looked at, because when we were looking at single instruments, so this orthroposcopy shaver, they double peel packed it, which is a no, no. Is there, how would you do it, Terrell? Would you peel pack it? Okay, how else would you do it? Do you have a choice? You don't have to show me too well. Don't, don't let them egg you up. 
you could wrap it. Either one might be acceptable, but, and this isn't the appropriate side. Remember, if it's a heavy instrument and you think it's going to tear through the plastic, like what they did was double pack it, and that's incorrect, but that was really old. You, it would be a size up, all right? But you could wrap it. Yeah, this, I just brought it out for, to show you. You can use your judgment. And remember, when you go to sterile storage, as you're putting things away, you can kind of see how was it done, excuse me, before, all right? Your IFUs are going to tell you, because the main thing, the reason why you want to choose the correct method is because you want it to stay sterile. True? Here are the pill packs I was telling you about. They're used for lightweight, yes. We label only the plastic side, yes. And the approved marker is usually a Sharpie, yes. And you'll notice there is the exact picture of a basket. Like I said, some of them have liners, but you'll notice they are all stage paper to plastic. The items are so the end can be grasped when it's presented to the field because your rings are always on the bottom. They want to open the package up and deliver it to the sterile field. And this speaks to what could happen if you use the inappropriate size pouch. It compromises the integrity, moisture gets in, and all we had to do was go up a size. Right, Jessica? That was it. That was an easy one. Some of it is con it's just common sense, but you can ask. That's what the um, person there in front of you is for. Double pouching. Okay. Here's a, just in case, they double pouch. Rarely do they. They don't fold the inner pouch. In other words, you would have one inside and, right, and you wouldn't seal it. Hardly anybody does it anymore. But for FYI, you always are using the paper to plastic when you would actually put the tray in for assembly. This way, they're saying paper to paper, plastic to plastic. I'll show you better than I can tell you. If they were double packing, say it's this item, which is, we haven't looked at any hemostats today, have we? Mm. So while I'm sitting here, I don't want to lose anybody. Here's a question. If I'm double packing, do I have to put the indicator in both? Okay. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> It would go something like that, and you would only seal the top. Okay. It's, it's rarely done anymore because it's waste. I haven't seen this since, the, I want to say since the 80s. <laughs> I'm not going to go back that far. But I haven't seen this since the 90s. They rarely do it. Now, flat wrapping techniques, we, we're going to look a little more into that. Here's your to know. Your sequential is when they use two wraps. That's when you wrap it and wrap it again. It's known as a package within a package. What we do 99% of the time is the simultaneous wrap because the wrap we have right here that we've been using is double stitch. So it's already double wrapped. The simultaneous is already double width. 
But the sequential is a package within the package. It's just like how you do your Christmas gift, you double wrap them, and that they're rarely used. The square fold, we use the envelope wrap most of the time because it is able to more aesthetically present the instrument on the field, why we use it, and that's really the main reason why we use it. It's, it's so much easier to wrap around the contour of the package. Okay, questions? What time is it? Okay, 4.37. I think we, in a few minutes, we'll go on break. Um, see what else I want to cover here. Labeling. Where's the STEAM team at? Labeling is from each end of the process, okay? Prep and pack your initials. If it's an automated system, right? Meaning you scan the tray before you assembled it, Gabriella, you, you scan your badge and you scan the tray. So it will associate with you automatically. In a manual system, you'll sign your name on the count sheet. At some point, we have to identify who assembled the tray. Your lot control numbers, what did I say was on there? The date, what else? The sterilizer and, and the cycle. So that's your lot control number. The identification of the sterilizer and the cycle. All do not get processed on the same cycle. There are some instruments, okay, that have a longer processing time. The date of sterilization, the requesting department, and the assigned storage location, all right? Departments are geared towards, it will say labor and delivery, x-ray, because remember, they're our customers too. Cath Lab, they're our customers. Their instruments come in and we're usually on a 24 hour turnaround, Terrell, meaning most of your clinical services close like five o'clock during the day, 435. All of those instruments come down and we tell them they can have them back in 24 hours. They'll get them back the next day at some time, okay? So we process them. They don't stay in our department. They come in, we process them, and they go, all right? The loaners, they come in, we process them, and we put them aside to the case. Then they go. Our instruments that live in our department, sterile storage, this is where the storage location, because let's look at these different shelves. You got ortho here. You got labor and delivery here. You got neuro here. You got OTO here. You got plastics here, all right? So you wanna make sure your job, when you pull the instruments out the sterilizer and they've cooled properly, you gotta put them in the right location, okay? Now, because the hospitals have ongoing, they're still using instruments that you have need of tomorrow, right, Abby? That's how our priority list continues to generate. Communication between the three is very important. We usually, storage is an issue in almost every hospital, but it's so important guys, location, that we put things where they properly belong. Because when they go looking for it, they need it for a case, or it's a one of the contract. This is the benefit of the automated system. The systems are only as good as the people who use them, right, Jessica? That means if you scan it properly to the shelf, to the right location, then when they go looking for it in the system, it should be in the right place, provided that CC and them put it back where it belongs. The only problem, one of the challenges we face is we're not the only ones that have access to it. The nurses could come in and grab something and not scan it. 
You guys got questions for me before you go on break? Okay, so if we're not going to use slang and nicknames, we got to use the correct. I know some of you think your penmanship is out of this world, and it is, but try to always be neat. Yeah, legible. It's universal. If they ask you initial and, sometimes they'll say print and sign, whatever it's asking for, that's what you do. And let's go back to the count sheets, okay? When you're doing your count sheets, start off like this and you'll never go wrong. If it's a manual system, okay? Yes. Uh, I know. I didn't forget you want a count sheet. I'm going to give you this one in one minute. You'll have several counts. The OR count, the CCS count. Make sure when you put the count next to it, if it's manual, if it asks for six Alice's, you write six. Don't check anything off because if you're checking it off, you're saying that it's all there, right, Terrell? And even though it's asking for six, you might only be putting four in the tray. So under comments, you'll have a comments, it'll say no. You'll say minus two. The other important thing about your count sheet, before you start it, right, read it. And if it's an automated system, then your count sheet is going to appear on the screen. Look and see if it's giving you any special guidelines, because what the count sheet could say is, do not process without rider. OK, so that means even though everything is here, if that rider is missing, do not send them that tray, because what they're saying is, that's the key to this tray. Before you ever send up a discrepant tray, what's the first thing you should do? If I discrepant, this is my prep and pack team. You're assembling your tray, right, Jermaine, Gabriella, okay? And your tray is missing something. What's the first thing you do? Go check your extra, your clean inventory. Excellent. So you look where we keep the clean instruments in the department and it's not there. What do you do next? Good. Before you do that, you got three alternatives, Abby, okay? You're assembling the set and it's missing two, it's missing an instrument. You always want to look, you always want your trays to be accurate, okay? So you go look in the clean area where we are, because we've got cabinets and drawers and places where clean, <laughs> shut up, <laughs> where they are. If it's not there, then it may have been sterilized already in the single inventory. So you'll go look there in the sterile storage. It might be there. I would rather you take it out the single and put it in the tray because we want complete trays. All your single instruments are, are extras. You know, maybe a surgeon likes to use extra, what have you. And how would I know what the surgeon's like? Physician's preference card. Excellent, excellent, okay? So I go to sterile storage and it's not there. Then what do I do, Jermaine? because you gave me the answer. If I go to sterile storage and I still don't find what I'm looking for to make this tray complete, then what do I do? Absolutely. That's when you ask, can we go ahead and send it? And they will either say yay or nay, okay? Nine out of 10 times they will say, go ahead and send it, okay? What will happen, there is an identifier. Just like on your trays, there'll be an identifier if the tray has an implant in it, it'll be a sticker. If it's a priority, if it's a loaner, we have stickers that we attach to the trays that you get to see before you touch the tray, all right? If it's missing something, there will be a label letting the OR know it's missing before they take it in the room. So then they know, can I, perform the procedure without those instruments. And if the answer is no, then they should leave that tray and get an accurate one. This is where it's so important that you didn't check off it was there, okay? But that you gave the accurate amount of what was there and they can see beforehand it was missing. Because at the end of their case, they have to do a count. And if they're missing the instrument and you said it was there, now they're calling in x-rays because they want to make sure they didn't leave it in the patient. It's caused extra anxiety, it's called extra work, and it all goes back to you. Were you accurate 
in the amount. So it's okay if you're missing something, but make sure that there's an identifier, which the department usually provides, okay? Real important. Your count sheet will tell you other outlining sources that you will have. Okay. Oh, I meant to go back. I don't think it's gonna let me. And I'm not fighting with it. Okay. Sterility, time related, and event related. Remember we looked at that a little bit? Time related, if you look at that calendar, is dated April the 15th. So it may, if it's time related, we may say after it reaches this date a year, then it's no longer good. This is time related. It has an expiration date of how long we're saying that package is validated to be sterile. After it reaches that expiration date, Shanika will go ahead and reprocess it, even though it's never been used. If it's on a time-related system, right? Time-related says February the 1st, right? And here we are, February 8th. We know we've got to reprocess it because it was time-related. And that relies on product rotation, which is usually first in, first out. And we use the concept with food, okay? Time related and event related, how they work in conjunction with each other. Let's use milk. Milk has an expiration date, right? However, if we don't refrigerate the milk, no matter what the expiration date says, it will go sour because it's not in the proper conditions. Same with our trays, okay? Even though they're sterile, we went through all the process, we validated the chemical indicator, the biological indicator, okay? But the water sprinkler goes off or the temperature came outside of the parameters and it was 100 degrees. Say the air conditioner stopped working, right? Those are outside event related occurrences that could compromise the sterility of the tray. So even though their expiration date hasn't been met, even though they have not, the conditions on the outside are event related and they could compromise the sterility of the tray. This is why we always keep track of the temperature. Now, prep and pack. Negative or positive air pressure? Decon, negative or positive air pressure? Negative. Are we using this? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> The lot sticker looks good. <laughs> Suppose it's the last one. All right, I got a situation here and you guys got to help me out. This is the last one. This one doctor, he insists he has to have it, right? This is, this is Dr. Lazarus, he's a terror. And he says, I want to use it. We're solution oriented, so I want you to think outside the box. What can we do? We can wash it and then sterilize it. Do we have? He needs it now. He needs it right away. What do, uh, 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 think. We're not going to give him that as it is, but is there a way that we can still use that and give it to him? Hold on, what did you say? Uh-huh. What method would we use? Okay, 
All right, so we might not have covered this yet. I'm not going to be here. Did we talk about IUSS? All right, that's another class. <laughs> that's coming up. All right, so it's high temperature sterilization and IUSS is immediate use steam sterilization. We're going to get to that. So what I mean, and this is, you'll learn it. If it was a one of a kind and it had been damaged, just like instruments that they're in the OR, okay? Sterile field, hand me this, and it drops on the floor in the OR, right? They need it. It's crucial to the case. They send it back to us. It comes to decontam. I tell Shanique, prepare this for IUSS. It means steam. She still cleans it. When it comes to you guys, the difference between IUSS, immediate use, we won't package it. We won't wrap it it will go in a special container that we use for our IUSS sterilizer. Because with IUSS, and you're gonna get there, I'm just in front of myself because of the situation, all right? It doesn't have a dry time. It will go into immediate use, sterilizer, come out and go right into the room. It doesn't get stored, it doesn't dry. That's the purpose of it, mean, it means just what it said. It used to be called flash sterilization. It's still going to be, excuse me, sterilized. It's just not going to go through the whole process. And that happens. You'll learn that. When you're preparing something for immediate use, you don't wrap it because it's going to go in a container. And the um, IUSS sterilizers are located in the OR. They are separate from our steam, okay? So you guys wouldn't sterilize it. Prep and pack would prepare it, and then the OR would put it in the IUSS. And the OR takes it out. And the OR has to list why they did it. We'll get into that a little later. But just to let you know, before we quick say no, give me a minute, OR. Let me think about it. Because we always want to meet the needs of the patient. Another thing that we could have asked about it, well, what is it and do we have it in another tray? Okay? Because if we have those same instruments or we'll ask, communication is key, we'll ask them in the OR, what is it that you need in that tray? And then we can say, we've got them in the liver tray so we can give you what you need. Before we ever say no, we want to think, give ourselves the privilege to think of, is there a workaround? And then, remember I told you, Abby, the OR is our number one customer. We want customer satisfaction, true. And not so much the customer is the nurse, the doctor. The customer is always the patient first, true. We want to make sure that we can give them what they need. So we ask the question, stay with me, Nazaya. The break is coming up. <laughs> The question to the OR is, how soon do you need it? Right, now that I know who you are, and you're calling from OR5, and you're telling me we need to turn this around, or we need this, they dropped it on the floor, how soon can you get it back? Your question to them is, how soon do you need it? Because then you know what you're working with. Sometimes they will put us in a spot, and it's just for bad communication, where they think they have to immediate use it, but in actuality, they have enough time to run it through the whole cycle. Our goal is always run it through the whole cycle. That's our goal always. And we can do it if we effectively communicate. If I say, we got to push this through as a priority, there is probably a shorter cycle on your mechanical disinfectors. So you did it. Then Jessica, who this is her specialty, thoracic, Stay with me, because I got four of y'all in assembly, and I know she knows this tray like the back of her hand. Gabriella has never done the tray. Who am I giving that tray to? Thank you. And I don't, this is not the time for Gabriella to stomp her feet and say, she always get to do that tray. <laughs> so remember, get your ego out the way. She does it, and she lets them know, hold, a, hold up a sterilizer. You're communicating. I've got a tray. So that way you won't have all the sterilizers running. You'll hold one for that tray. Communication is always key. And this is why I tell you guys, you can't come to work with a disposition that is non-conducive with teamwork. I don't have to like you. That's not why I'm here. 
but I have to make sure we meet the needs of our patient. We have to be professionals. That's where it went back in the other presentation about using slang. And I said this earlier, I know I don't have to repeat it. We have no reason to use profanity, slang, or be inappropriate at any time that you're in the hospital. Let's always remember where we are and save that for when we get off. Okay, just, just a reminder, because sometimes it's a high paced environment that you're working in, it's fast moving. Just like you're a new techs, there are new nurses, there are new surgeons, they're resident. Everybody's kind of learning as they go. So when it comes to instrumentation, you are the subject matter experts. And if you're not, you at least know how to get the information. Okay, so here's our concerns. We always look out for moisture, dirt, dust, physical damage. If you were saw this tray, you would be 100% right to say, we need to do it all. Here's what some of the sterile storage areas look like. And I'm gonna leave those temperatures there. We are gonna take a break because we've been nonstop since three. Um, we'll pick this back up and we'll get back to the hands-on but real quick, just so everybody can have a chance to actively participate. Gabriella, can you get me a Babcock hemostat off the table? Sasha, can you get me an Alice hemostat off the table? Ronesha, can you get me a cooker hemostat off the table? A cooker hemostat off the table? I need from you a Babcock. And Gabriella, you're getting me an Alice or one, or the, one way or the other. <laughs> somebody get me an Alice, somebody get me a Babcock, somebody get me a cooker. Shalia, I need a curved mosquito. Hemostat. What do we use the hemostats for, everybody? Control the flow of blood. Which one do you have? Which one do you have? That is correct. Which one do you have? The, the cooker. That is correct. And you have the Babcock. Excellent. And you are getting a curved mosquito. Cece, you want to get me the medicine bomb scissor? Huh? At cooker. Because it's with a K. Good. <laughs> Who has not? Abby, did you get the instrument? For, yes, you did the suction. Abby, you said you did three. Don't come at me like that. <laughs> you say, I got three. Don't say that I get an instrument. She got four. Oh, say good. They, four. <laughs> good, good, good. And this one is mosquito? Mosquito? That's not a mosquito. Think about it. Mosquito is the smallest. Let me see what you got. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Good. Good stuff. Y'all can just. Yeah, you can put them back. Thanks. Good. So. That's it. Excellent. You all are outstanding. I want to say that um, where we started from, let's always not measure, like I went, I tend to we'll go in front of you with some of the things that we haven't gotten to yet. But when we get to steam sterilization and we get to IUSS, you'll be like, I've heard that before. I know what it means. You follow me? It's because that's how central processing works. It's, it's constant change, right? Some of the things, the way you're doing, Whatever the schedule says, nine out of the 10 times, it can tell you you're in decontam today, Terrell, and then something can happen. Somebody's got to go home, okay? Somebody didn't show up, or we got to overload, and leadership will move you around according to where they need you to be. Your goal, ultimately, as technicians, is that wherever you are assigned, you can meet the requirements, okay? That is your goal overall in your career, meaning you want to be able to work in decontam where Shanique and Terrell and Abby are. When you come in, you can work there safely and efficiently 
you know what you need. What's the first thing you need when you walked in Decon, Terrell? PPE, what is that? Which consists of? Come on, you are, you, you're the one in there. What do you need? Water resistant gown. Okay, so you're in decon. What else do you need? What else are you using while you're in there? Shoe covers. So you got your PPE on, all right? And what kind of equipment are you working with? That's the condition of the instruments. What type of machinery are you working with? All right, prep and pack. What do you need to be successful today? You need wrap, pill packs, rulers. Why you need rulers? To measure the instruments. Okay, good. What else? Indicators. Y'all need it again. All right, steam. What do y'all need? What's the most important thing you guys in steam need? Y'all indicators are already put in the tray. But, what did this say? Nope. Everything, everything that you guys sterilize has to have this on it. It's the lot sticker, so you need a lot gun. That's the most important thing that you need. You also need to check everything that they give you and make sure that the filters are in place and make sure the locks are in place and make sure that they're labeled and going on the correct parameters. So that's, you guys have that whole load. They only have one, ish, one tray after another, but you're putting that whole load in. If you do it incorrectly, all that work has to be done over. If you had a load with 16 different containers, remember you've got pill packs in there, right? You got floor trays in there. If you don't change the parameters, if you start it and run it on the wrong cycle, all that has to be done over again, right? So you have, you have to know what needs to be done next because with a failure to communicate, they're waiting for this tray. Jessica told them you can have that tray at five o'clock. They're calling down, it's 10 after five CC, where is this tray? I don't want you to say, I'm just putting it in. I don't understand that. I'm in the, oh, I don't understand. Why are you just putting it in? And the tray came to the department at 12 o'clock today. So somewhere there was a breakdown, right, Shanique? That's where your communication and your teamwork is so important. They do something in the OR and we'll do it in the department called a five minute timeout. You don't have to wait till this call to give yourself a timeout, meaning where am I at right now? What am I doing? Okay. If you're assembling a tray and you got a phone call and somebody came in and asked for something, you can lose your place. So you can stop and say, wait a minute, where am I at? What am I doing? Same in decon, same in steam. What they do in the OR when they call the five minute timeout, anesthesia, where are you? X-ray, where are you? Scrub nurse, where are you? Anybody can call it if you think something is not right. Either you're thinking it's right with everyone or with you. Some, anybody can call it because you want to make sure, right, that we self-correct before it gets to the patient. So you guys are in STEAM and Gabriella is back at Prep and Pack. She sent the tray, you put it in the sterilizer and she's saying, why do I have these extra instruments? This looks like something that should have went in that tray, right? What do you do, Gabriella? You say it again. So what would you do? You did the tray already. You sent it to Steam, right? And you've got these extra instruments left that you think go in the tray that's already in the sterilizer, what move would you make? You want help? What would you do? 
That is what you would do, and that is correct. She said, give me that tray back. <laughs> she said, before you send that tray to the OR, let me open it up again in our department where if this was missing, I can fix it. Hold on, one at a time. That's what we're doing. Your steam, remember, you've already put it in the sterilizer. And she, That's what I'm saying. But she's she's pulling it back. If you suspect that something isn't correct in your tray, the best time to do we what you don't want to do is say, oh, go ahead. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. That's what you don't want to do. And because you guys always process one tray at a time, you don't have that problem. It's when people are doing too much that that usually happens, or they're talking too much, they're distracted from what they're doing. So that's why when we say, you come in and you say, I pay attention to detail, I'm gonna say, show me. Remember, when you come in to my department and you're interviewing, I'm gonna say, Kevyana, who's not here today. I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna say, Nazaya, right? How, why should I hire you? Why should I give you a shot? And you're gonna tell me, I can work safely and effectively in a decontamination department. I know how to prioritize. I know how to peel pack instruments correctly. I know how to wrap trays and I know the instruments in a basic tray. I can put a tray together. I'm impressed. Next thing I'm going to say, show me. I'm going to go get a tray and bring it in front of you and you're going to start dissecting it just like we started putting it together today. That's all of you. I went and I got the tray. I bring it to you. You're interviewing. I've got the tray in front of you. And I say, go to work. What's the first thing you're going to show me? Your tamper evidence seals. You're going to say, these are the seals and this is what they're used for. You pop it open. Filter retention plates, open it up. Filter looks good, no holes, right? You'll pull out your basket and start doing your instruments. Start pulling them out and calling them as you go. This is where you look real good. Diva retractor, handheld. Wheatlander retractor, self-retaining. Let me see, is this blunt, is it sharp? You're going to really impress somebody with... They may or they may not. That's why you don't need it. That's why I've been asking you to go and retrieve the instruments without the count sheet so you start to know them. Your Alice's, your Babcock's, your Cooker's, your Curve Hemostats, you should know, you should, your goal should be to know them by heart when you leave here. If you don't, then you, you will get a chance to. I want you to know everything in this tray you should know by heart. This is like 45 instruments. Am I correct? You should know those. You're going to look real good because the person that you're competing with may have never physically touched the instrument or they may have. So it's all in your level of confidence. Okay. And you, you want to always stress and I'm willing to learn more. They'll ask you questions. Well, where do you see yourself in the next time you say, well, I want to become proficient in all the services that you have. I need to know how to do heart trays, transplant trays, thoracic. I, it'll take me, I want to learn everything. So I give myself one to two years and that's accurate. It takes at least that long to become a good tech, a fair tech in two years because our business runs on demand. Okay, Terrell, you might be in decon for, three, for two months. It's possible You're, because I've got call outs. I've got people on vacation. I've got Dear God, FMLA, I got some things. This is where I'm putting you. Your job is by the time your two months are up in decon, you could be my go-to, right? You come in and you say, you know how to rap. I say, okay, Nazaya, can you wrap those basins? I look up a half hour later, you done wrapped them basins. I'm like, we got a wrapper. 
right? You come in and I give you, we will play to your strengths. Don't feel if you, you and you start at the same time and you never get to do that trade, that doesn't matter. You're, you're going to, as long as you show up, eventually you're going to get your moment. The important thing for you guys is you show up and you show up on time, okay? What are my triple A's? There you go. You, got, you can't learn anything if you're not there and you need to be there on time, especially with your internship. You have, you know, we, your habits that you start off with are usually what will follow you. Now I'm, and everybody else is human. We know there are unforeseen traffic. They're digging up everything in Philadelphia, right? We understand there's traffic. We understand children, parents, spouses, those things do happen, but they can't happen every day. And it's not, I'm, I'm not that I don't really um, care, Jessica, right? Because I do, but I still have to get my work done. You know what I mean? I'm sorry for your loss. You know, death and the, there's some things we don't want you to come to work sick because we don't want you to make everybody else sick. That's legitimate. You didn't go out and say, I want to catch the flu. That, you know what I mean? That's legitimate. But you being 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late, you come back from break late, those are bad habits. I, you'll be asked to leave and don't come back. Or they might keep you, but they will not consider you when it comes to hiring. Your attendance is very important. Your attitude, you don't have to come there and be Joe with everybody. That's not why I'm hiring you. All I need you to do, you can come and say, good morning, good afternoon, how's everybody? Where is my assignment? And let me go to work. And then I'll ask you, should you know, do you understand you know, what you're doing? And you say, yes, Mr. Ford, I'm good. And I give you the trades, I say, these are the priorities. So you, you know what I mean? If you're not sure, if I came to you and said, this is the priority. And then here come another supervisor behind me saying, no, I need you to do these shavers. You are within your right to say, excuse me, Mr. Ford gave me this, and now you're giving me this. For clarity, which one is the priority? It's not that they don't know what they're doing. It changes. Case got canceled. Case got pushed up. Now we need, so our priorities could change. What was priority on first shift is not your priority on second shift. It changes. So it's, it's never like miscommunication. Sometimes it is, but for the most part, it changed. All right, so you want to be flexible. Flex or, I want to say flex or die almost. You, you have to be flexible. If you want me to go in decal, my favorite technicians, the best ones are, where you want me to go, Mr. Ford? And I don't have to think twice about it. You know what I mean? Gabriella, you came in, I said, I need you to clean those scopes and those probes. It's done. I don't have to ask where she's at. I know where she is. Okay. You can, you, so anybody have questions about anything we covered so far today? I, I want to tell you, I think you guys did a great job, both interaction and um, with the things that we covered. Everything that we do, you don't have to overwhelm yourself. What you've noticed, we, most of you guys, we're all on chapter 12. And after this is over, uh, some of you are going to chapter three. Who's that? Uh, Gabriella and Shalia. You're going to anatomy and physiology. So because you haven't covered that yet, they have, that's why some of the answers they knew. Okay? You guys are going to chapter nine. Am I correct? Disinfection. Is that correct? Is that what chapter nine is? I believe it is. This disinfection. I'm thinking. That's the detergents, high level, mid level, low level. Yeah. Um, good question. Next week is going to be a little trickier to work out. Say it again. Correct. Enzymatics, low temperature, high temperature, uh, the spalding. It's about time. No, <laughs> I know. 
I know you did. That's looking at the different detergents. Um, it'll be different. It was great to have you all in for this portion because you did not need to know the other the other parts. Next week, I got to work around it and, and still make it work for each of you within the timeline. So that's why it's important that you all log in at three o'clock. I will let you know today is only Tuesday if you're coming back. If you do, it will still work. It will just break it down into different components. It'll still work even if we come back here. The reason why those of you who are going into detergents and disinfection, we might go over to the lab and spend some time over there because you guys can work a little more independently for your next phase, it'll, it'll work out in here as well. What's going to be beneficial to all of us if we're able to come back in the building is the ongoing hands-on. That's going to be beneficial to all of us. And then uh, for anatomy and physiology, we'll work it through. So I've got, Abby, where are you? Because you're... <laughs> huh? Which chapter were you on? Five. Four is microbiology. Regulations. Right, right, okay. Huh? I know. Y'all gave me a headache trying to figure it out. Go on break. <laughs> I don't know, see if they got any snacks out there. I want the healthy stuff. We're gonna break the 5.30. 